I am Dr. M. P. Changappa, I teach at WBNUJS, Kolkata. The topic I am going to discuss about uh, crime against forest conservation in India. Forests are very important for mankind's survival. Forests are not only important from the utilitarian perspective, they are also important from aesthetic perspective. Forests not only provide us with forest products such as gum, paper, fruits, timber, furniture, product, etc., but also provides us with tangible things necessary for survival such as oxygen, they act as a carbon sinks and sequester carbon which helps delay global warming. For instance, the, the Amazon forest in South America is known as the lungs of old forest has provided a natural habitat for many animals. Forests are naturally linked to the survival of the uh, tribal people. In addition, Forest also maintain an equable climate, they control soil erosion and water logging or flooding of areas and forest become a sources of humans since forest provide us with so many benefits. The necessity to protect them becomes inevitable. Forest preservation in India was for a long time the concerns of either tribes or the British who ruled the country. With the onslaught of industries and mechanics, forests are being exploited for the wrong reasons and face a number of threat such as forest land degradation, deforestation, soil erosion, etc. On the contrary, due to the same processes of industrialization on assimilations of new concepts and advent of globalization, the world has come together and it has united especially for forest conservation through various modes establishment of many organization and enactment of international treaties and national legislations. A conscious desire has emerged to protect forest. India has also been part of the of this process for this whole while now. As far as legislation is concerned, there are some British era laws that still relevant and thus continue and some were enacted after independence depending on the forest cover and the needs of the country. This module attempt to throw light on a few international legislatives in the direction of forest conservation and on national legislation relating to forest conservation. Definition of the forest, in the context of India, the Environment Ministry has built the definition of forest upon the definition given by the Supreme Court in the landmark case of Godavarman Thirumalpad versus Union of India, AIR 1997 Supreme Court. The court enunciated that forest must be understood according to its dictionary meaning. Thus, according to the ministry, there are two broad categories of India's forest and all recorded forests in the country will be included in the first category. While the entire community forest 
belt in the northeastern states where no survey has ever been done shall be included in the second category recorded forest area also known as forest area it refers to all geographic areas recorded as forests in government records according to the indian state of forest report 2015 it largely comprises of reserved forest and protected forest as defined by the indian forest act 1927 besides reserved forest and protected forest it may include all such areas which have been recorded as forest in revenue records or have been constituted under state acts or local laws it may comprise blanks and areas with tree density less than 10% this may refer to degraded lands wetlands rivers river beds creeks in mangroves snow covered areas plains plains alpines pastures cold deserts grasslands etc such areas are excluded from the assessment of forest covers forest covers refers to all lands with areas more than 1 hectares comprising of trees conifer of more than 10% irrespective of land use ownership and legal status it could include orchards bamboo palm plantation on private lands railways and canals plantation of coffee rubber tea etc growing stock national forest inventory the india state of forest report takes into account the growing stock of forests it elucidates the importance of nfi in the following terms it is most important input for sustainable forest management it act as a basic input for estimation of biomass as well as carbon stock which is an important component of international initiatives such as r e d d plus and other initiatives regarding climate change and carbon sequestration forest in india are classified according to the canopy cover as follow very dense forest cover equal to or more than 70% moderately dense forest between 40 to 70% mdf open forest between 10 to 40% according to the isfr 2015 forest covers in india is 21.4% when you look at the overall definition of the forest one thing it's very clear that the forest includes so many the trees which has been defined by the supreme court of india in uh, in the famous case of uh, godavarman tirumal pad versus union of india wherein supreme court of india referred the dictionary meaning in order to consider the word forest although the the word forest have not been defined under any legislations but supreme court referred the the term uh, forest from the definitions of of definition therefore it is true that uh, the purpose of the supreme court is very wide enough to cover so many the aspect from the so many the aspect uh, 
for the purpose of uh, falling within the purview of the Forest Conservation Act in India. Forest Conservation International Efforts. United Nations Forum on Forests, the UNO, UNESCO, UNESCO established the United Nations Forum on Forest in 2000 as a functional commission. The UNFF adopted four global objectives on forests, reserve loss of forest cover, enhanced forest based benefits, increase area of protected forests, reserve decline in official development, assistance for sustainable forest management. In 2007, the UNFF adopted a UN forest instrument is a non-legally binding instrument on all types of forest. Bone challenge, bone challenge aims at restoration of 150 million hectares of deforested land and degraded lands by 2020. It was established in, in September 2011 ministerial round table conference. It is driven by the global partnership on forest landscape restoration for whom IUCN act as a secretariat. The partnership is a voluntary network of governments, international, non-governmental organization and others. It aims to fulfill the convention on biodiversity ecological restoration, controlling desertification, mitigation adoption, REDD -E plus global land degradation natural goal. Rio plus 20 fulfills the bone challenge could sequester additional 1G TCO2 per year and would reduce emission gap by 11 to 17 percent. You all know REDD and REDD red stands for the reduced emission for deforestation and land degradation. It is a major scheme to bring money from developed countries to developing countries, especially tropical rainforest countries like Brazil, Indonesia, etc. The program was launched in 2008 under the expertise of Food and Agricultural Organization, United Nations Development Program, UNDP and United Nations Environment Program, UNEP and strategies go beyond deforestation and land degradation. They include the importance of sustainable management and enhancement of forest carbon stocks in reducing emissions. Forest conservation national aspect in India, forest conservation is governed under laws such as Indian Forest Act 1927 and Forest Conservation Act 1980. Apart from this, the State of Forest Report of India survey provides accurate information about forest area and forest cover in the country. Indian Forest Act 1927 this act mainly covers the following three types of forest, namely reserve forests, chapter 2, which deals about how to 
create reserve forest. Reserve forest can be constituted by a state government in any of the following areas, forest land, waste land, which is the property of the government, forest land, waste land or which government has proprietary rights. Whole or any part of forest produce of which the government is entitled. The state government can specify limits and declaration by notification and can appoint forest settlement officer who shall enquire and determine existence, nature and extent of any rights that might exist in favor of any person in or over any land comprised within such limits or in or cover any forest produce. The second categories of forest, village forest, chapter 3, section 28, state government may assign right to any village community. This rights could be over any land which has been constituted a reserve forest and the government may cancel such assignment, such forest shall be called village forest. In this regard, rules shall be made by the state government. Another categories of the forest that is protected forest, chapter 4, section 29, state government may declare any government property to be a protected forest in the following cases. The property is not included in a reserve forest. The government has proprietary rights over the property. The whole or any part of the forest produce of which government is entitled. The forest land and waste lands comprised in any such notification shall be called a protected forest provided an enquiry has the as to the existence of extent of rights of government or private person has been made. Forest Conservation Act 1980, Forest Act 1927 gave lot of power to the state government to declare the forest, uh, forest area as reserve forest, protected forest, village for forest. The purpose of all this the declaring these areas is to protect the forest resources in our country. The moment the state declares this forest as a reserve forest, protective forest, this area belonging to the state government and under this law, the state has power to restrict various rights of the people who are living in and around the, this forest area. No person is allowed to enter into this forest areas without the, the permission of the concern authorities. The Forest Conservation Act 1980, in view of the rampant deforestation that was taking place, forests were shifted from the state list to concurrent list through the 42nd amendment to the, the Constitution of India 1976. This led to the enactment of Forest Conservation Act 1980. Both Indian Forest Act 1927 and Forest Conservation Act 1980 provides for effective management of forest by state governments and central government. But there are significant difference in the imp implementation on and functioning of both the acts. Section 2 of Forest Conservation Act 1980 lays down the objectives which are under the Indian Forest Act 1927, state government have been empowered to make rules regarding various activities including granting of license to inhabitant of forest to take trees, timber 
or other forest produce. However, under the Forest Conservation Act 1980, a state government decision is subject to the approval by the central government. This represents a paradox of what is termed as environmental federalism in India. Section 2 has given way to many contentious issues such as those involving diversion of forest land for various purposes and encroachment of land pertaining to the question of deforestation of forest. It was held in a Chowgul and Company Limited versus Gov Foundation and others that prior permission from the central government is a primary requirement for the diversion of forest land for any other purpose. Therefore, it is considered to be mandatory to get prior permission of the government of India in order to divert the forest land for non-forest purpose. So many cases it was held that section 2 of the Forest Conservation Act given prospective in operation and whether the government of Kerala could, could with uh, do any activity without the permission of the central government, the Supreme Court said that no. Therefore, without the permission of the central government, no forest area can be converted for non-forest the purpose. Therefore, the private individual, corporation, etcetera have to get the prior approval of the central government. The judiciary has interpreted such approval to be mandatory even in the cases where further approval is required for the re renewal of such lease. Non-forest purpose, it includes breaking up or cl clearing of any forest land for portion thereof for cultivation of plantation crops such as tea, coffee, species, rubber, palms, oil bearing plants, horticultural crops or medicinal plants. Any purpose excluding reforestation, it does not include any work relating to conservation, development and management of forest and wild life, namely establishment of check post, fire lines, wireless, communication, conservation, fencing, bridges, water holes, trench marks, boundary marks pipelines or other like purposes. Also, cultivation of fruit bearing trees, oil bearing plants, medicinal plants would also require prior approval of the central government except when indigenous species are to be planted to the areas and such planting actively is included in the afforestation program for the forest area in question. Further explanation, cultivation in forest areas by the tribal as a means of their livelihood without undertaking monocultural Asian or Arjun plantation. Central government is not required for this the purpose. On the other hand, Tusser cultivation involves specific plantation of Asan, Arjun, trees or horse trees for silk cocoons shall be treated as a forestry activity which shall not require prior approval of central government provided that such plantation activity does not involve any felling of existing trees while undertaking such plantation. At least three species are planted of which no single species shall cover more than 50 percent of the planted areas for the purpose of silk worm rearing planting of non-forestry activity under the act. In the case of Center for Environment Law versus Union of India and others on 15th April 2013, the court was asked to determine the necessity of a second home for the Asiatic lion as the girl forest in Gujarat is the latest survival home for it through the fact it was brought to the 
light that certain areas around Kono Wildlife Sanctuary of Madhya Pradesh had been protected under the, the Forest Conservation Act 1980 by the state government in 1997, but most effort had been rendered insufficient in a span of about 20 years. Thus, the court reiterated the necessity to protect the endangered animals and birds such as the Manipur, Bro, Antared Deer, the Bengal, Florican and other animals and habitants in order to provide them with a safe natural habitants. Penalties for offences development has led to the unrestrained deforestation and crimes against forest conservation. The national legislation for forest protection provides for penalties in the event of any contravention of the laws or commission of an offence. The Indian Forest Act 1927 has detailed provisions regarding penalties for offences. Section 33 provides for imprisonment and fine for different kinds of damages to trees in protected and reserved forest as well as damage to forest as a whole. Section 42 provides for penalty in the form of imprisonment for breach of rules made under Section 41 for the regulation of transit of forest produce. Provision to prescribe more penalties have been made for the state government. Under Section 51 of the Act, Chapter 9, Section 52 to 69 especially mentions, mentions provisions regarding both penalties and procedural procedure. This provisions includes among others seizure, confiscation of any illegally obtained forest produce, arrest without warrant, compounding of offences, procedure when offender cannot be found, etc. The judiciary has played an important role in curbing these offences and punishing those who were responsible where the boulders originating in the forest were being carried, carried without a transit pass, they were held to be illegal and falling under the ambit of section 33, 41, 52. In another case, the court carefully examined and decided to acquit the accuser on the basis of reasonable ground. The petitioner in the case were accused of causing loss to the government by illicit cutting teak trees and removing the same from the forest. The court after the examination of grounds such as long period of judicial custody, expiry of one of the accused and submission of the bail bound set aside the sentence against the petitioner. Forest Conservation Act 1980, despite being a short legal enactment, provides for penalties for contravention of the provisions of the Act. Section 3A provides for imprisonment for a period of 15 days for the contravention of provisions of Section 2 of the Act. Section 3B provides for penalty for offences by authorities and the government departments established their responsibility where a case related to illegal construction of a building or forest land, it was alleged that it invited the provisions of section 3A. The court accordingly agreed with the allegation and held the builders responsible for such construction. Judiciary has been proactive in punishing the offences only after scrutinizing the facts of the cases because in many cases false allegations against the government operations are brought out in the context of non-adherence to environmental norms. In summary, the forest protection is of immense importance to the mankind for both utilitarian purpose and ecosystem survive, survives. It is maintained as a preferable balance between the various bio chemical and cycled occurring on the earth. Forest conservation has attracted importance in the most of the countries in the world, especially those that boast of the vast majority of forest. International initiatives such as UNFF, 
bone challenges and other similar the conventions which have protected the, the forest covers and also important legislation such as Forest Conservation Act, Forest Right Act which contributed immensely for the protection of the, the forest covers in India. There is a constitutional mandate in India under article 51 AG and 48A which stipulates the responsibility on the part of the both state as well as the specially the constitution of India under article 48A and 51AG of the Indian constitution which guarantees the state as well as the central government obligation to protect the forest resources. Similar obligation also on the part of the citizen as a fundamental duty to respect the, the nature as well as the forest covers in India. Thus, Indian Forest Act 1927 and Forest Conservation Act 1918 form the bulk of the legislation regarding forest conservation. In addition, the Manual Indian State of Forest Report provides valuable insight as to the state status of the various classifications of the forest which helps in the directs, directing the conservation efforts accordingly. Therefore, we can say that the, the primary the legislations Forest Conservation Act, Forest Act Act contributes immensely for the, pro, the preservation and protection of the forest covers in India, especially in India after the, the enactment of the Forest Conservation Act 1980, lot of things have been changed wherein for the first time central government take, takes the control about the forest covers in India. Thank you.